Y'all best suck them down. There's not been enough to him. What up, big motherfucking Plattsburgh? Yo! Uh, it's a spiritual pleasure to be here tonight, y'all. I'm gonna open this mystic session with a song about a hainted backwoods town in East Tennessee. So, uh, you know, settle into your mystic seats and let's get this motherfucker flown. Yeah. Psychedelic trip, ain't no place like Sneedville, Tennessee. I did some Yeti powder, popped a couple of pills. Sneedville's full of them only thrill. Spiritual River, won't you help me ease my mind? Oh, Austin River flow, Sneedville blues can't take my soul away. As can be, I had a guy named Cricket, he was Cricket OG, born and raised in Sneedville, Tennessee. He said you can't trust nobody up in that place, everybody's packing in them trees, his lays with that mystical powder, PCP. A whole river flow, Sneedville blues can't touch my soul, no. tour, I was on a 300 mile hike. Yeah, I was on a 300 mile hike, a mystic 300 mile hike right before I came on this holy tour. As I threw my guitar, I'll tell you about a couple of the shrimps that I met out there. 
So you know, we was in a two-level shelter. Two-level shelter out on a mystic lake. Packed to the gills with motherfuckers. We was chugging, we was puffing, we was sucking them down. We was going wild, we was skinny dipping, we was gangsterizing. We all passed out, mostly on the bottom level of this two-level shelter. Because the top level was 17 plus feet up in the air. Like some kind of hainted ass bunk bed that you don't want to fall off of. <laughs> some out of somebody's nightmares. That enjoys the top level of a bunk bed. And so we're chilling. We all went to sleep, laid out. About 4 a.m. we all wake up to a loud smack. We knew some sorry sucker had fallen off the top level. We all threw on our headlamps looking for the carcass. Or hopefully a non-carcass, hopefully a living being not with his neck cracked or nothing, off that 19-foot drop. Everybody's got their headlamp surveying the scene, trying to see who fell off the motherfucker. <laughs> we couldn't see nothing. Nobody was there. We're all like, dude, looking at each other. What the fuck? We all know somebody fell off the John. And our lights coalesce in the corner. Upon a shriveled figure. It appears to be an 80 to 90 year old grandpa curled up in a mangled form, mostly naked, rocking a satin blue thong. I said, What the fuck is that? My homegirl next to me, she goes, It looks like a 90 year old dude mangled up in a satin blue thong. I said, what the fuck? You okay? He goes, Ehh. I said, what the fuck? You okay, dude? <laughs> I said, whoa. That's a fucked up motherfucker. Mangled up. 90 year old in a satin blue thong in the corner of this hainted shelter. <laughs> I said, dude, can you walk? Motherfucker slowly unmangles himself like something out of the most strangest <laughs> science fiction horror movie you've ever seen in your life. Stands up. Somebody gave him a cigarette lighter in his hand. He lights it up and he's staring off into the distance. Mangled, old, sagged out, motherfucking 90 year old Trippinati ass cheeks dangling like a motherfucker. <laughs> Shriveled old man's dong hanging out the side of a hainted satin blue thong. As much as we could tell, he had been tugging, looking at us while we were sleeping, <laughs> and his motherfucking dumbass fell off the top bunk. <laughs> Staring at that mangled dong hanging out the side, and I said, that's a nightmarish sight. Going back to sleep, I had beautiful dreams. When I woke up in the morning, I hightailed it the fuck out of that place. Next thing you know, I meet a guy named Earbuds. Everybody's got trail names out in the jaw. When I'm out there, I'm Manimal. I met Earbuds. I met an obese Nick Nolte look-alike <laughs> whose name was Nick Nolte. <laughs> I met a dude named Shitfoot. <laughs> that motherfucker's feet smell like rotted ass shit. Comes nighttime, this dude named Earbuds rolls up into the shelter. Half the people are asleep. My man pulls out a two-pound summer sausage. Talking one of these footballs of meat about yay big. Wide as a mug about yay big. My man, earbuds, proceeds to deep throat that summer sausage in less than one minute. One of my shrimps was on a stopwatch. Dong, dong. And motherfucker goes, Bleh! 
I said, whoa! And the entire time this dumbass is deep throating a two pound summer sausage. He is lecturing on how you're not supposed to eat much food out on the trail. You're not supposed to eat much food out on the trail. I said, damn! Deep throated a two pound summer sausage in less than a minute while lecturing on how you're not supposed to eat much food out on the trail. I said, your motherfucking name ain't earbuds, it's summer sausage. And then everybody voted on it and his name became two pounds one minute. <laughs> so when that dude rolls up at a hostel or a shelter or something, they're like, yo, two pounds one minute, what up, fucker? And he's just like, oh, man. But that's his name, because he deep-throated that motherfucking sausage. I've never seen nobody do it like that. It was naughty as fuck. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm chilling with five different people. Five different people at a strange campsite. Everybody hung their food from the mystic bear hang limb. Everybody hung their food so the bears couldn't get the food that night. It was five people. There was five food bags hanging from the mystic bear hang limb. These bears at this one specific campsite got real smart about a year ago and they learned how to get on each other's shoulders and snatch the damn food bags out the tree. So all these food bags got pulled down by the bears that night. There was five people, there was five bags of food. Most of the shit was eaten. And one of the bags was a half gallon of prescribed extra zinc suntan lotion. The bear sucked that down like a hot Genesee cream ale. <laughs> but one of the people in the group was vegan. One hey, of the shooting here. No busting caps in the building. Yeah. One of the people in the group was vegan. The bears didn't go near that bag of food. <laughs> These bears sucked down a half gallon of extra zinc prescribed suntan lotion. But those motherfuckers wouldn't go near no vegan food. <laughs> Put that goddamn gun away. <laughs> Put that shit down. Seriously. Shut the fuck up. Sit down. <laughs> the bears suck down suntan lotion, but they wouldn't touch no vegan food. But that ain't spiritual. Man, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm chilling backwoods with some wild shrimps in a psychedelic ass place called Flag Pond, Tennessee. And this song right here is called the Flag Pond Road Blues.
Thanks to Holy Kristen, Holy Big Mac for lacing us up in this motherfucker. Thanks to Sam. Thanks to Big Hunter. This is an instrumental tune that I wrote the other day. I was hiking on the Appalachian Trail, you know, about uh, about a year ago, and I found myself in New Hampshire, not that far from where we are, per se, but worlds away, deep in the White Mountains. I found myself in a mystical bathroom. I was in a bathroom and there was two stalls up in the men's bathroom on a mountaintop in New Hampshire. them stalls and I was doing my mystical business opinion upon that <laughs> mystical throne if you know what I'm saying and I'm sitting there upon that throne and the other stall was open it was a two stall men's bathroom no urinals or nothing there's two motherfucking stalls I'm sitting upon that mystic throne. And some dude comes in and he goes, Little Zacky? Little Zacky? Little Zacky? Little Zacky? Thinking to myself, I'm the only motherfucker in this bathroom. 
Ain't no little Zacky up in this bitch. Little Zacky. Little Zacky. I know you ate a lot at dinner. But did you have to go again? I'm sitting there thinking to myself, is this dude talking to me? He must be, because there ain't nobody else up in this motherfucker. Little Zacky, I know you had a lot to eat at dinner, but did you have to go again? Little Zacky. Now, I'm still not saying nothing. I'm just like kind of riding this mystical wave. Little Zach, I know it's you in there. I can see you wearing your beige Crocs. It's the same damn pair of mystical beige Crocs that I'm wearing today. The actual ones. <laughs> Little Zach, did you have to go again? I know it's you and those beige crocs in there. At this point, motherfucker puts his head underneath the stall, <laughs> looks up and sees me. I said, motherfucker, it ain't little Zacky. <laughs> that dude ran the fuck off real quick. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. He went running away. I never seen that motherfucker again. Songs about hiking, y'all. <laughs> uh, Way out on a hill, you're moving still, psychedelic. You're waving on a friend, and once again, you'll be golden. You're laid out on the floor. You're doing more, you're moving sideways on a journey. Keep it holy. You're going up the trail, you're setting sail, you're moving forward, I wonder what's around the hill, just wait until you're cruising over, a dusting off that old rug, big tater bug, you hold it Cornbread Steve used to chill back in the day In a mystical place where he used to live in West Georgia Called Palookaville, Georgia Way out in the west side But you know, when I lived uh, in that mystical zone I was mostly living at a place 
pretty close to a backwoods country ass ripoff of a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> called Vittles. <laughs> that when you'd roll up in this mystic diner of sorts. <laughs> you would be greeted, you would be greeted with a big old cloud of smoke. And it was cigarette smoke, but also unholy pipes were being puffed up in that genre. Talking them meth chalets <laughs> and them crack johns. And you'd roll in there, they'd be crack smoke clouds and mystical cigarettes and all kinds of other stuff. You couldn't see where you were going and you'd just hear people screaming and hollering. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Out of the smoke, you knew you was in the right spot. One time I brought a psychedelic Italian noise rock band to eat at Vittles the morning after the concert at my crib. One of the Italians was a white Rasta. He was attempting to order from the menu. He said, well, the waitress came up. What do you have? He said, a pancakes are with fruit. She said, what the fuck? <laughs> White Rasta Italian psychedelic shrimp said, a pancakes are with fruit. She said, what the fuck? A pancakes are with fruit. She said, what the fuck is he trying to say? I said, that motherfucker's trying to say pancakes with fruit. She said, why didn't he say it the first time? I said, I got no fucking clue. She said, strawberries and cherries. She brought grapes out on this motherfucker's pancakes. It's a twisted place, Vittles. <laughs> I rolled in there with my boy Extra Cornbread Steve for the first time that he had ever been there. His name wasn't Extra Cornbread Steve yet. He got his name at this place. We rolled in. We sat down. I ordered a mystic breakfast plate that was off the chain. Shriveled psychedelic. Also shriveled and enormous at the same time painted sausages, mystical eggs, and all kinds of other shit. He ordered the three vegetable plate, which you do not do up in this restaurant. You do not order the three vegetable plate. The green beans have seen better days. The hash browns, you don't want to fuck with them. The fried green tomatoes are black. The Brussels sprouts are some neon hainted color that if you saw it, it might burn your eyelids off. <laughs> you do not get a three vegetable plate up in Vittles, but he ordered it anyways. And on top of that, he asked for extra cornbread. He said, extra cornbread, please. And the waitress staring at him said, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> this broad went in the back. She pulled out a enormous plate resting upon a moving cart of so much motherfucking cornbread <laughs> that if everybody up in this goddamn room puffed a pound to the dome, couldn't even begin to touch them motherfucking psychedelic steaming piles of cornbread, <laughs> which was so high they were scraping the cobwebs off the motherfucking ceiling of this crazy hainted joint. My boy, out of these 50,000 possible pieces of cornbread, he probably ate about a quarter of one piece. And that's how we got the name. Extra cornbread steel. 
He lived out on a mystical place called Palookaville, Georgia, that was built on pure quartz crystal ground. That's why this song right here I'm about to rock is called The Quartz Blue. Sitting there on a pile of coal by the riverside Thinking about those beautiful round eyes Sitting there looking at the setting sun Wondering where you'll bide your time Oh, you're so far away Deep in those blue ridge hills show that I played uh, maybe uh, I guess about two two weeks probably after the last time I was here in Holy Plattsburgh. I played a show in Tucson, Arizona. And I asked my buddy, I said, where's the show going down in Tucson? He said, man, it's going down at this crib. And I said, hell yeah. Now I got to the crib. They had a show that he said it was going down. And let me tell y'all, it was abandoned. It wasn't a soul in sight. And I said, dude house be condemned up in this bitch. He said, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I forgot about that. <laughs> I said, fuck. 
I said, where's the show? He said, let's move it to another crib. I said, hell yeah, I roll up to that crib. And they said, we ain't doing no show tonight. I said, whoa. Hit up my boy, I said, where the fuck the show going down? He said, let's just do it under the I-10 overpass. I said, hell yeah. I said, should I drive down and meet you where the show's going down? He said to me, he said, dude, if you were to drive in your car down to where the show's going down tonight, two words, guaranteed carjacking. Not it's a rough area, not it's psychedelic. Guaranteed car jacking. Pulled out the whip while it's moving. And you will be possibly blasted. And the shrimps will roll out with the whip. Said to my boy, I said, well, I guess I'm riding with you. I'm trying to chug anyways. He said, hop in the hainted SUV. <laughs> Got right in. It's me and my boy and two younger Shrimpinatis. We're cruising. We're cruising way down through Tucson, Arizona, through the city. Well, all of a sudden, we're past the city. And we still cruising way out into the desert, way south of town. Cruising. Until literally, I can tell we're about to stop soon because the road's about to end. And I see one psychedelic building in the distance and the overpass in the distance. And I said, what's that psychedelic building over there? He said, that's the Hells Angels Clubhouse. <laughs> I said, word. He said, we're parking there. I said, are they cool with that? He said, I got no idea. I said, whoa. So we pull up next to this demonic barn with the demonic red light flashing supposedly is the Hells Angels Clubhouse and that's the only building within eyesight and there's this interstate in the distance and I said dude it's desolate as fuck out in here is anyone coming to this gig he said I got an idea you go out and hang underneath that bridge for a while I'm gonna go to a hipster coffee shop I'm gonna pick up multiple carloads of people from this hipster coffee shop, I'm going to bring them back under this bridge for the show. I said, man, that sounds like a strange idea, but am I going to be cool just hanging under this bridge? You said guaranteed car jacking. All I see is the Hells Angels Clubhouse. He said, well, these two young guys are coming with you. He looks at him. He said, y'all boys brought the hand cannons. Both of them pull out huge pistols. Hand cannons. I said, man, this gig is going to be possibly the most lit of all time. <laughs> so we go underneath the bridge, hand cannons in tow. <laughs> Me and two shrimps with enormous motherfucking revolvers, <laughs> chilling underneath a hainted bridge in the middle of the desert, in Tucson, Arizona, way south of town, spraying up mystical tags and just wiling out. Next thing you know, 35 people appear from the hipster coffee shop. <laughs> My boy actually came through with about six round trips from the hipster coffee shop in the hainted SUV. He brought them down. And they were ready for the gig somehow. I don't know. Who kind of blew my mind when they all cruised in. And the show was off the chain. I was the only person performing. I rocked the two hour set sitting upon a broken shopping cart. You could have heard a motherfucking pin drop up in that bitch if it wasn't for the 18 wheelers blast above everybody. You know what I'm saying? At one point, some dude showed up straight out of the desert. Nobody knew who he was. And he just started screaming at us. After party! After party! After party in my place, you motherfuckers! Well, I said, at least we know what we're doing after the show, guys. His place. We all cruised to a spot. Turned out to be a hainted desert shack made out of cinder blocks. 
Bathroom door ripped straight off the hinges. Desecrated tortillas up in the frying pan. Big ass bugs I didn't knew exist until this point. There was definitely somebody tied up in the back room. We didn't see them, but we all knew they was there. Two psychedelic couches, one Bluetooth speaker. The party was jumping. I'm about 35 beers deep at this point. Dude comes up to me, he goes, You do yo I said, hell yeah. Yeti powder, holla at your boy. He said, let's get something. I said, hell yeah. He said, let's take your boy's SUV. I said, hell yeah. He said, I work for the Mexican cartel. We cruise into the cartel's trailer park. Pure Yeti powder. <laughs> I said, motherfucker, I'm 37 beers deep at this point. Pure Yeti powder in the Mexican cartel's trailer park sounds like an incredible idea. <laughs> so we cruise in my boy's hated SUV down to the Mexican cartel's trailer park way in the desert, about an hour south of Tucson, Arizona. We roll up in. I can't tell y'all what went down in there because that's classified information. <laughs> but all I can say is that there was pure Yeti powder involved. We made it out alive out of that joint. For some reason, this fucking guy is still with us. And we cruise into my boy's hated SUV down the back desert highway. Going about 35 miles an hour. And my bad boy just fucking clips his seatbelt, pops the door, barrel rolls out of the moving whip, <laughs> runs out, peace, barrel rolls out into the desert, goes running. And I look at my boy who's driving and I said, man, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Cruise back to his place, which, uh, you know, it turns out to be another hainted desert shack. We roll up inside, my boy goes, now it's time for the real Yeti. I said, the real Yeti? Motherfucker, I've sipped 45 beers tonight. I did pure Yeti powder with the Mexican cartel. The hainted trailer park. What could possibly top that shit? What is the real Yeti? And he goes, Crystal Meth, motherfucker. <laughs> I said, oh, hell no, dude. <laughs> Motherfuckers came out the woodwork. There was light bulbs a-blasting. <laughs> there was people pissing and shitting in Home Depot buckets in the corner of the spot. <laughs> I woke up in the morning on top of strange air mattress at the big old tarantula sitting up on my chest. Let me tell you, I never got out of bed as quick as I did that morning. <laughs> I never hopped in my car as quick as I did that morning. I never cruised out of a town as quick as I did that morning. But I must say to y'all, it was one of the best motherfucking shows I ever played in my life. In Tucson, Arizona. So this last song's about love your motherfucking Plattsburgh.
I got records and tapes like a motherfucker holla at me. I met a man out in that field, oh, his heart was true. His eyes would peer straight into you. His spirit was burning with a heavenly light. And the peace he held within himself was as still as that night. You lay.